Well, hello, you marvelous child of God. Welcome to Bible Bedtime, Season 5, Episode 249. My name is Dana, and I'm your host. In this podcast, I read a full chapter of the Bible in a way that I hope will help you fall asleep in heavenly peace. In this fifth season, we have read through the fifth book of the Old Testament, which is Deuteronomy. And now, tonight, we will begin the fifth book of the New Testament, Acts. After the chapter, I read another chapter, but this time from the book of Psalms. And we finish each episode with the Lord's Prayer. If you would like to support this ad-free podcast with a love offering, we are on Venmo. You can enter at Bible Bedtime or just search for Bible Bedtime Podcast. Of course, all the links are in the show description. It would also bless me tremendously if you would take a moment and leave a rating or a review on the podcast application of your choice. This helps other people find the podcast. And I appreciate reading the comments. Even the ones that are a little mean. (laughs) And sometimes people are very critical. That's okay. I do learn something even from those reviews. I want to apologize for this episode coming out late. I, uh, gosh, I got a uh, terrible virus and uh, was sick for a couple of weeks with the RSV virus. If anyone has had that, my heart goes out to you. It was quite miserable. And then I had a uh, resulting infection afterwards. If I sound a little hoarse, then that is why. I'm sure that you can uh, be patient as I get my voice and energy back. Now, one of the best ways that I have been able to recover from being sick is by resting. Something I'm not always good at, but I think this illness reminded me of the value of simply resting and that there's nothing inherently wrong with needing to rest at times. So that's my reminder to myself and a reminder to you that now it's time for you to rest. Your day is done. And the only thing that you have left to do is relax and get ready for a good night's sleep. So make sure that the lights are in a great position for you to be soundly asleep and crawl into your bed and snuggle into your favorite sleeping position. Nestle your head into your pillow and join me if you can, if I can, take three deep breaths. Here we go. One. Two. And three. Wonderful. Tonight, we are starting on the book of Acts. Acts 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after getting instructions through the Holy Spirit, to the Apostle he had chosen. After 
his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. And suddenly, two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives and a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this. So they called that field in their language, Akobama, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and May another 
take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men. Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. And they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. Psalm 31 In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me into your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors. I am a dread to my friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten by them as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear the slander of many. There is terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. 
Let me not be put to shame, O Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and lie silent in the grave. Let their lying lips be silenced, for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you bestow in the sight of men on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from the entries of men. In your dwelling, you keep them safe from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed his wonderful love to me when I was in a besieged city. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock, my Redeemer. And now it's time for you to fall asleep and drift in to a relaxing and revitalizing sleep. Sweet dreams. Good night.